Good evening, everybody. I thought it was about time I got back to doing my lives and I've got a very special guest tonight. And it's uh, TV's, I like to call her that, Dr. Nagat Arif. Uh, I met her at this morning because she is the resident host uh, GP uh, at this morning, but she's also on BBC. She has an amazing knowledge about women's health. But the funny thing was we bonded over beauty and I just didn't expect it. And she's incredibly smart, incredibly engaging, you can ask questions, I'll get her to answer them, but also she's just fascinating and she's a little bit addicted <laughs> to budget beauty and I absolutely love that. I'm just going to invite her in now. Let's have a look. She's not there, so I will invite her. Where are you? You should be right at the top. There you go. And I know this because I've just put your name in. There you go. Lots of doctors on my feed because it goes in. There you go, uh, Nagat. I've got lots of doctors on my feed, mainly because I'm obsessed with them. I'm obsessed with the content they create because I always like to learn so much from them. But what I didn't expect. Hello, hello good evening. There I am. Hi. I had trouble getting you in, don't worry. I was just saying that we had a bonding moment when we met uh, late summer at this morning. Obviously, I love your items on this morning, and I just think the way you articulate health issues is really helpful and down to earth. But it, that we bonded over beauty, and I just didn't expect that. We did because you came in with loads of dupes, and I'm a huge fan of dupes. So you're not going to like me very much, and actually, a lot of your followers might not like me because I am so not brand loyal. I'm a real hussy. <laughs> What I was saying was that I've moved not far from you. So we're both sort of northwest of London. And um, and that's where you are actually a resident GP as well as being the resident GP on this morning and the BBC and, and various different places. And you and I just basically had this chat where I said, well, first of all, I've got to ask you, you know, where do I find a decent GP? And you went, oh, I can get you a GP, no problem. Let me tell you why to, where to buy the best beauty bargain. Yeah, I know because um, I have to admit, growing up, um, beauty was never something that I focused on. My mum, and uh, I never did makeup at all until I was about 18 years old. And that's because I, I'm a, um, um, my father's an imam. Uh, so you have to come to the mosque in Cheshire. I'd love to show you around. And growing up in a very conservative Muslim community, makeup was something that was just always off limits. And actually, when you're praying five times a day and you're washing your face, it was always about make sure you have a good moisturizer and you cleanse your skin because you're going to have to wash it all off again. So I never really indulged in makeup at all. And it's only when I got to university that I thought, actually, I need to try lipsticks now. I need to try some makeup on my face because it makes me look a bit awake when I'm at university. And then now I do TV. So now I do this morning. And that's when obviously I met you, you beautiful woman. And I get really intimidated by any beauty person that comes along because my knowledge around beauty and products is very limited in the medicinal term, if that makes sense. But to understand what it actually does is very limited. So I'll be really honest that when it comes to beauty buys, I go with what is great on my skin. And in my head, over the years, what I've done is I've categorized luxury stuff, which I will actually spend a bit of money because I've done my research and I think actually I will use this and I will use this number of time. And then my everyday products that all of us use. And um, I'm going to shock everybody. A lot of things I buy is from Lidl and Aldi. Cause <laughs> and I love that. And the bonding moment we had, and I'm glad you mentioned those two stores is you said to me, you sort of hustled over to me in the green room and you just said, I know the best place to go. You <laughs> must film in Little and Aldi. They do the best dupes, Nadine. They really do. They do, because you came in with all these dupes and you came in with home products and perfect, you know, sort of candles and things. And um, this is going to make me sound so old and dull, but I find candles, you are literally burning money. <laughs> and so why spend so much money on candles when actually it's the smell and the fragrance. And if I go into Lidl and Aldi, I honestly cannot tell the difference. If I buy a super drug owned candle to say a really expensive brand, I still can't tell the difference. So over the years, so when you do remember, I said to you, look, do you not, did you not notice it looks just like Joe Malone? And you went, oh no, I just like yeah. the smell of it. That, that exactly is what it is. And I think that for me, over the years, I've just thought to myself, okay, you've got to, you want to have beautiful, nice things. 
but um, especially because people always assume that you have to spend a lot of money, but you don't really need to. And you could have beautiful, lovely things and lovely smelling house without needing to spend lots and lots of money. So I fell in love with you instantly because I thought this is a woman that speaks my language because she's doing everything for everybody. And that's exactly how it should be. Right, let's dive straight in. Tell me what you've got in front of you. So just out of view, I can tell you, I've asked Dr. Nagat to get all her best beauty buys. Yeah. Go ahead, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that i love it i i feel that one of the things i champion is high street beauty because i just think it's never been better it, it is so good right okay first tip is i don't show my hair but hair is really important even okay. as for our hair so i wear the hijab and i used to never deter away from the head and shoulders that's all we had but i i grew up with head and shoulders too <laughs> I never went anywhere further than this. We had head and shoulders or dozing when I was growing up, which was most unglamorous, I can tell you. I use Lacura, so Lacura is from Aldi, and this head, this shampoo, which is a two-in-one shampoo, is exactly the same as head and shoulders. It does the same thing, and I read all the ingredients, and it's very, very similar. And this is like now, I think it's only what, one pound 75. So this I find is so much better for my hair. And I started swimming a lot. So when I go swimming, I find the chlorine, even though I wear a cap will affect me. So this is a conditioner that I use. Well, what's that? I love this. This is look, this is again from Aldi. And this is 87 pence. And the what's whole the name of it, Nigat? It's Lacura again. Yeah, no, the name of the actual, that's the brand, go on. So the fresh and clean apple, I love the smell of apple. That's so, that reminds me of my youth as well. Honestly, the smell of apple, and this, what I do with this is when I go swimming, I don't wash my hair with shampoo, but I have found that if you go swimming, you get lots of chlorine in your hair, and the smell of chlorine just never goes. But I've found that this, in my hair, just on its own, not with a shampoo, will take out all the smell and leave your hair silky smooth, so I use it just as a conditioner and it still cleans my hair and it gets rid of the chlorine smell. So this is my go-to and the whole family use this. A lot of women with really textured hair and curly and kinky and coily hair use something called co-washing, which is essentially washing your hair with conditioner. Yeah. So essentially the conditioner is, and the water is enough to cleanse most people's hair if you've got a really dry textured hair. So you're essentially co-washing with Lakira Apple Conditioner. So I didn't know that. But the other thing is, is that... Um, what we did very early on is my son has eczema so the water then that we live in the area that we live in is quite hard water in the chilterns i've noticed that i'm in the chilterns as well my hair has played up massively since i've moved here it's and even harder than london water it is so much harder and we underestimate how abrasive that is on your skin on your appliances like your washing machine your dishwashers so one of so when i said we make investments every what me and my husband did was we made sure that we have a, a water softener so a water softener i find also works really well with just a conditioner and looks after your hair and stops it's actually one of the things that stopped my son's eczema and also stopped all of us from having dry skin and stopped my hair from falling out. So I, I'm going to slide into your DMs afterwards because I think I'm going to have to invest in one. My hair has played up so much and it's, it's breaking off really badly. And I thought London water was the worst water. And now I'm getting this Chilton's water. Now, for anybody that doesn't know the area we live in, <clears throat> the Chilton's is where they make a lot of mineral water. So the water is really mineralized. And actually, we don't have water shortage where we are at all because the water comes from bores in the, in the ground but it's really, really, really hard, full of calcium, so bad for your hair. Yeah, really chalky, really bad for your hair. So when it comes to investment, so I find that I don't need to buy really expensive products with lots and lots of uh, moisture in it, because actually that, so for those, uh, for your, um, for the viewers today, I would say, I know it's very expensive, it's not cheap, but we'll talk about it on, um, when, uh, later on. Um, so someone's asked, what water softener product do you I've got Harvey's water softener, so you can just Google them and they do do it. It's an investment for the kit, so you have to actually buy the kit. And the kit bit is the most expensive bit, and then you top up with the water softener. So it's it's great for your skin and hair. And then, Did you notice a difference with your skin as well as your son's skin? Yeah, definitely. Okay. His eczema just completely stopped, and we use oh, leather. Yeah. And that takes me on to what I use for my skin. I was always an imperial leather, so imperial leather, leather or dove. I swear your parents know my parents. All I had when I was growing up was imperial leather. 
I think it was even feeling that little bit of paper inlaid yeah. takes me back to my childhood. And then as I've got as I've gotten older, um, again from Aldi, same brand as my shampoo and my conditioner, and I use the moisture shower gel, Jaboba and Chamomile, and that's what I use as a body wash. And once I use this with a water softener with the conditioner, this is just our daily washing routine. And that is just an all body. It's really lovely and gentle on your skin. And I think this is 85 pence a bottle. Um, so this is my- This is the best live ever. I love this, Nagat. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, honestly, I just, it's the same stuff. And um, it, it, it's so important. And I think that the thing is, is that you can be a doctor or a lawyer, but you just need great skin at the end of the day. And um, I just, I think that these work for me anyway, they do. But the one thing that this is, so this is Tesco's. So one thing that I do use is a good body lotion. Okay. So everybody has their own brand of body lotion. Um, by the way, I'm not paid by any of these brands. <laughs> um, <laughs> Although I can feel a contract coming on. <laughs> um, Bayless and Harding, they do these bottles of hand and body lotion and they're per it's the smell of it. So this is lemon and blossom and white rose. So that's the one that I use. Um, this is perfect um, for your skin if you've got that little bit of dryness that doesn't go away and it's great for your hands and talking about hands because I wash my hands a lot as a doctor and um, so when it comes to investments uh, worth paying a little bit more to get V. so um, this is just in my handbag that I use constantly as a moisturizer for my hands particularly under COVID honestly I just had raw hands constantly I don't have fake nails or anything like that so my, my hands are I would say my most embarrassing feature because I go into this morning and everyone's got gorgeous manicured hands but I'm literally every day doing coils and marina coils and washing my hands so for me I've just found that it it doesn't last I know it's I know it sounds strange right but if you were my GP stroke gynecologist I wouldn't want you to have long nails I just yeah. that would seem wrong to me I just want clean neat short nails yeah yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> I, and I love CeraVe I have to say their hydrating gel wash if you're ever tempted is absolutely beautiful that's their sort of face cleanser but you didn't you haven't mentioned a cleanser so far for your face Okay, so I don't use a cleanser. So Crystal's just asked, did you say Aldi, the gross for sure? Yes, I find a lot of my body washes and stuff are well. And then again, from Aldi is I use face masks. Yeah. Oh, do you? That's interesting. Because um, you've got beautiful skin. It's not like it's dry and crepey. No, no. So um, I, cleansers, I, I don't really understand. You can teach me about this with cleansers. But what I found is that at, uh, once a week this is my me time I will I don't buy expensive face masks but I will buy this one skin I think they're also in B&M stores <laughs> so that's my other bargain hunting stores and I think they might be in Poundland now I think now so <laughs> you're like in shock so is it is it just called skin yeah so it's a brand called uh, skin techniques oh yeah okay and, and what, what make which one is that which brand um which so this is this is a cleansing and nourishing uh, face mask. Pink grapefruit, okay. Yeah, grapefruit. Um, and I and these are, I think, uh, anywhere between, because I, I buy, I bulk buy. So <laughs> I buy about seven or eight of these. And I think these are about a pound. I think they're a pound. A pound. I remember seeing them in Poundland when I filmed in Poundland recently. And these, I find, are perfect for cleansing and nourishing and toning. So I would do this on a Friday, on a Sunday evening. Um, because that's when I get time. My son, who's four years old, gets absolutely petrified when I have a face mask on because he doesn't recognize mummy. So I have to be careful when I wear it because he does get very, very scared. And then the other thing I use, again, by the same company, are these eye hy hydrating um, gels. They're really good. They're really good. So this is um, lavender smoothing and calming eye gels. And in fact, here's a little thing that I do, which actually I should fill my is when I'm in, getting ready for this morning, I actually put two of these under my yeah. eye before I come into the studio, just because I look so exhausted. The um, amount of people that wear them in the cars, because this morning send cars for us because we have to get in so early in the morning. The amount of people that sit in their cars with those, I'm sure, you know, ooh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't blame you. And also, I think once you've got that hydrogel technology, why would you pay so much money for them? Because the active ingredient that is is just a hyaluronic acid and glycerin serum. So 
exactly exactly so these um i i buy these for 99p um these are from b&m that i buy them from um and um also i buy them, them from pound world as well so i pop into pound world and then i stock up on a, a lot because then i go through them gradually over time and the other thing that i found from pound world was balance so this is so this is my little serum that i use Oh, I've got a really good one for dark circles. Hang on, bear with me. I'll answer that. So is it just called Balance or is it Balance Me? So it's Balance Active Formula, Vitamin C, Brightening, Glow and Radiance. So it comes in a little a little serum like this. Yeah. And you apply it to your face twice a day. And this costs about £1.20. And the ingredients, honestly, are not that different from L'Oreal or anything else. And um, I don't know whether this works but it seems to keep my skin really nice and hydrated um and I... for somebody with your skin color a vitamin c is really important because basically it just regulates the pigment production the melanin production so that if you're out in the sun or you, or you've had a really like for example this summer we've had a really long hot summer if you're prone to pigmentation a vitamin c is preventative rather than reactive and i just think it keeps skin even and glowy and bright that's yeah. all and that's why I use it because one of the things I really struggle with, and this is from long night and long nights. Um, I'm terrible with drinking water, mainly because I literally have to see patients every 10 minutes. And so this is, sounds really horrific, but on busy days, I don't even get time to have a wee in my surgery. And so you forego the water because you're just like, I need to do this home visit or I've got this person to do um, next. And, and the phone calls are coming in. Um, and so one of the things I'm really prone to, which I realize is really horrible dark circles. So they're not exactly the best at the moment. And I get really horrible dark circles around my mouth as well. And this is when I say investment is worth doing. Um, so one of my really beauty buys is L'Oreal. So you'll be happy that I do have some expensive stuff. <laughs> That's um, not expensive. Trust me, Nigat. That's not expensive. That was considered middle market for me. So that's the hyaluronic acid, isn't it? Yeah. So this is hyaluronic acid and this is from L'Oreal. And I put it all over. So serum over my face, under my eyes. And um, someone asked earlier, what do you use for your um, uh, dark circles? Um, CeraVe actually do an eye serum as well. Um, I've run out of that at the moment, but I use CeraVe, the under eye cream. Um, as well and I do that every night in the morning um, and so uh, but Revitalift is something that I use because I'm now getting older and I'm starting to get sort of wrinkles at the side of my eyes here um, not so much in my forehead but like I'm getting a, a line um, so I, this um, is really helpful this is really good but it's got the little ball applicators as well so it feels really nice under your eyes I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be, I'll be really honest with you. I wouldn't think your dark circles are um, uh, lack of water related. I think probably it, it's just the pigment related because your skin is more melanated than mine is. So I, if, if I get dark circles, it'll be lack of volume or it'll be tiredness or anything like that. But for you, it's, it's a, a side effect of having gorgeous color skin, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, well, I think this, I also keep in the fridge. So you could correct yeah, me on it's lovely because I keep it in the fridge because it feels so lovely on the skin afterwards. And so this I would say is my most luxury buy um, that I have. And it lasts a long time. No, it's brilliant. And also the little roller balls, they, they're metal, so they automatically stay cooler. So they de-puff and, and decongesturize first thing in the morning. You know, you were saying about cleansers and you don't really use a cleanser. Yeah. So when you come in from this morning, because a lot of people won't notice this because when you see Nagat or myself on this morning, we look like we don't have that much makeup on, but the lights are so bright. We have a lot of makeup, a lot of makeup on. You yeah. must want to cleanse your skin at the end of the day. What do you use to get it all off? I wash my face with soap, so imperial leathers. <laughs> okay, if I can just say one thing to you, just swap to a super fatted solid cleansing bar. So Dove, the, the, just the Dove, is because it's got so many moisturizers in it. And it, because the, if you can get the unfragranced one, it's better. It's just a bit more gentle for your skin. But I mean, can I just say, that bears testament to how good your water softener is. Water softener is a thing because I find that Imperial Leather soap is so good for my skin. It just washes off all the makeup. And then I do use um, the Macilla water as well for the tougher. Yeah. 
for the eye makeup. Yeah, because they put a lot of mascara and liner and sometimes they put little outer lashes, don't they? Which yeah. micellar water do you use? Um, that, again, is the one from Aldi. So the okay. same brand, the Cura, micellar water from there. It's really good. And I think I got that from the And I've, the bottle is amazing. It's the same. And it works exactly the same way um, as well. So that is what I Honestly, so far, the only thing I would change would be your choice of heavily fragranced soap. Because basically, a soap is, is made by a process called saponification. So it makes it really alkaline. And your skin is just slightly acidic. So if you get a pH balanced solid cleansing bar like Dove, it just means your skin won't feel so dry afterwards. So that's all. I've learned something. That, is that, so that said, can I just say, good, healthy skin like yours, and I've met you, you have got beautiful, healthy skin. It, it can rebalance its pH within about 45 minutes an hour. So skin is very, very clever. Skin is really good. And, I, and I'm quite lucky that um, I did have acne when I was growing older. But um, when we changed to a water softener, that was the other thing that really sort of made the skin a lot more better. And then over the years, I've learned what really works for my skin. So um, uh, one of the things that I use as a moisturizer is actually Vaseline. Um, so we had this conversation because it's known as slugging and you didn't know it was slugging. And anybody who's anybody in skin is doing it at the moment. How do you use it? So I wash my face, obviously, and then I then just rub it along my face uh, um, everywhere. And again, I use the one from Tesco, um, any any brand. For, uh, so uh, but one it's of the, all the same, all the same. So I just use uh, Vaseline as my sort of moisturizer at the end of the day. And then that's it. And I think that's that's all I ever need. Um, and I don't have anything more. Expensive. And so you sleep in that overnight? Yeah, I yeah. sleep. Essentially, it's an occlusive. It just sits on the surface of the skin. It can't really penetrate the skin. But as it sits in the skin and you sleep overnight, if your skin is properly hydrated, it will hydrate from the way from the outside in, from the yeah. inside out. So, um, I, can I ask a question? Somebody just said you've got beautiful eyebrows. Do you have to put makeup through your eyebrows? No. These are. Just She's just lucky, people. Yeah, honestly, there's a story behind my eyebrows. I always had really thick, horrible eyebrows. So growing up um, in Islam, there's a, a real thing about women plucking their eyebrows. There's some people who really feel that it's unnecessary and then they say that it's against Islam. So there was a real contentious thing as I was growing up, but everybody used to have really thin eyebrows in the 90s. So when I was growing Thank you, up, Kate Moss. I know. So I used to have these thick, horrible eyebrows and I hated it. And so when I was at university, I started to get my eyebrows done. And my mother was horrified. She wasn't happy that I had my eyebrows done. And then now, since then, as I've got older, I just do them myself. Yeah. So I either thread them or I pick them at the end. But that's usually just what I need. And they're still thick. But thick eyebrows have come back in fashion. They're completely fashionable. You've got beautiful eyebrows. Can you thread your own eyebrows? Yeah. Oh, I can feel like a live coming on for this. <laughs> How do you, because I don't know if anybody's ever had their eyebrows threaded. It's an amazing technique where you hold the thread between your mouth and roll and yeah. twist it. But how you do that on yourself and don't end up accidentally with a sort of Brad Pitt Fight Club eyebrow, I don't know, Nagat. The other way that you do it is you can make it into a loop. So loop it and then do it yourself by a mirror. So I, I yeah, so honestly, I'm... I have very little time. I have three kids. I have surgeries to get to. I'm always studying. So I do most of my beauty regimes myself. So I have to do my own eyebrows. So, and so. you don't find it painful at all to do it yourself? No, because I've done it for so long myself now that I don't. And then when I really don't have time to do it, I will go properly and get a professional to do it. But yeah, at the moment, like I did these myself about three days ago. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're a really good shape. So the original shape you've got was originally created and now yeah. you literally just do the regrowth through. I just yeah. do my... If anybody's looking to have their uh, brows either waxed or threaded, a uh, Blink Brow Bar is just... Yeah. I, 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 I always say it. I've never been paid by them, I promise. They're just amazing. My mother, who's 86, goes and she gets them threaded and then they tint them up if you're going grey as well. They're just incredible. And then if you want, you can just pluck out any of the regrowth. They're amazing. Oh, that's great. And I love Flower Girl's comment. She goes, she threads her face. So that's absolutely brilliant. And then... I was going to say this, and I hope my mum won't watch this back, but she might because she knows you from television. Uh, they always say to my mum, um, uh, would you like your face threaded? 
And she's always, no, I wouldn't, thank you very much. But if you don't pay attention, they just thread everything in sight. Those girls love to thread anything. If you get an arm out or a leg out, they'll thread oh that too. Do they? Uh, no, I've always stuck to just doing my eyebrows. And then when I was about, between the ages of about 16 to, um, well, even now, every now and then, I got my face lasered. So I have polycystic ovar uh, uh, ovaries. I don't have the syndrome because my hormones are okay, but I do have polycystic ovaries. And being from a South Asian heritage, um, I did have what I felt was a hairy face. So I went through, when I started um, earning some money, I kept some money aside and started getting laser treatment on my face. And every now and then I'll just go to a laser clinic and whenever I can get time and top it up. But rough at the moment, as I've got older, I've needed it far less. So I'm okay for the moment. But that that's usually the thing that keeps me quite... It was probably the reason you had problematic skin breakouts when you were younger as well. I know yeah. it's, re it's really unfair. It's very interesting. <clears throat> and I don't know whether to tell you this, but you might need to go back again when you hit perimenopause and menopause. Yeah, no. Menopause. I do get the odd small hair and for that I brought, so uh, I brought the Philips at home laser treatment. Oh, I, the Lumea is The Lumea, I've got that and I use that every now and then because as I'm going through perimenopause, I definitely know that the hair is coming back. So there is a change. And for me, I just then zap a few if I've got some on my own. And I think that there's less embarrassment around that. I remember when I was younger, it was such an embarrassing topic. I never wanted to talk about it with anybody. And as I've got older, it's like, for goodness sake, it's a bit of hair on your face. And I just admit to people, yeah, I've had laser treatment and I'm not embarrassed about it. No, absolutely. And, and if somebody was to say to me, what's the biggest <clears throat> treatment in, and I've been a beauty editor for over 30 years, laser hair removal can be life changing for people. I mean, I remember having it just on my underarms and thinking on bikini line, thinking this is incredible. But if you've got a facial hair problem, it's amazing, absolutely amazing. The only reason, technically they can't say it's permanent, but it's like virtually permanent. The only reason it's not permanent is if you're pregnant or you go through menopause, then obviously your hormones then might bring back some of the hair. But I swear that probably I had my, the bits that I've had lasered, I probably had lasered 15 years ago and probably 85 percent of it never came back wow i mean that's great i mean i can save that for my face as well and i i see so many patients in my surgery with pcos and young girls who are 14 15 16 and who might even get an earlier diagnosis and my heart breaks for them because they they are shaving and they're waxing and you know um, cost is it's a luxury so that's why i feel that there are some things that are worth in, worth investing in and if somebody has i mean they're more than happy to talk to me because i've been through uh, through that as someone who's got pcos so you know happy to talk about it because it is something that no one tells you at all do you know i pitched an idea to this morning and i'm desperate i need to tag vicky in this and I said I really wanted to do something on the effects of hair and beauty. So I wanted to talk about the fact that my hair was playing up and my hair was falling out through the front. And, and she said, oh, I'd love to do that. And I said, but I feel like I need to co-anchor it with a medic because I'm not a medic. You know, I know what works cosmetically. I feel like we need to co-anchor a thing oh. on hair and beauty and we could do everything from head right the way down. That's they're fascinating me so much because obviously you know with me with my ovaries and my hormones and, and then perimenopause doing being a menopause specialist I hair comes into it a lot and then the other thing that really fascinates me is that there's this huge thing about beauty and hair and I deal with a lot of breast cancer patients as well and um and I cover my hair so there's this whole thing about in Islam and coveraging of hair but a woman that I saw um last week she had a mastectomy for breast cancer and she said to me that actually having my boob removed was not the worst. It was my hair that's gone. And she wore a hijab. So I said to her, but you wear a hijab. And she goes, yes, I know. But the thing that makes me beautiful, which was my hair, my husband doesn't see it. And he, you know, that's the thing that he would see at home and was reserved for him. And I think that that gave me goosebumps because I used to think that, okay, I cover my hair and it's a religious thing. But even our hair, when it's covered for our own loved ones, there's a special mm -hmm. connection. For that and I had completely discounted that I just thought because she wears a hijab doesn't matter if she's going through chemotherapy because she'll just cover it and the public won't even know that she's going through chemotherapy because she doesn't look any different but her it's about her sense of self that's what it is and it's amazing to me I remember I used to work for a charity called look good feel better and it was about dealing with the side effects of cancer treatments and for most women the 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 they 
obviously they're frightened of chemotherapy obviously they're frightened about the sickness and the weight loss and all those terrible things the aches and pains but hair loss is the major thing and it's not just hair on your head it's your eyebrows your eyelashes you become completely featureless it's it's a really tough journey for people and i completely understand i remember doing a a, a piece of work with l'oreal and they were the first p people ever to do a hair campaign and they featured a young influencer that had a hijab on and she said just because i don't show my hair in public doesn't mean to say i don't take pride and i don't love and look after my hair and i loved that i know and i think yeah a feature is definitely needed on hair and oh, I, i'm gonna tag vicky below this i just think it's a really important thing to do. And I also think that COVID has affected a lot of people. So you've got COVID, you've got menopause, you've got the side effects of treatments, you've got perimenopause, hard water. I can do the cosmetic side of it and you can do the medical side. Yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely. I love that. Is there anything else? Do you wear any makeup every single day or nothing? I don't wear makeup every single day, but I do have, so again, this is my expensive investment. Um, I try lots and lots of different skin, but foundation, I do have a thing that you need a good foundation. So for me, what works really well is Clinique Even Better. And um, this is perfect to my skin tone and my, co my coverage as well. And because it gives you even coverage, it covers things like dark circles yeah. really, really well and around my mouth and any other dark patches because I do have a pigmented skin. So Clinique is my brand for when I use I'm going to ask you what shade you are. How good's your eyesight, Nagat? Can you tell so, me what shade you are? So this shade is number nine, Sand. Okay. Uh, that's, this I would say I've stuck with the same shade for the past nine years, so eight years since this has been around. It's the, it's the best foundation for evening out pigmentation issues, bar none. I absolutely love it. I'm a huge Clinique fan. I love what they do. And so the same, so I stick with mascara the same because um, I, I'm a teeth and eyes girl, if that makes sense. I love people who have great teeth and um, I love eyes as well. So lashes and things like that. So I use... Clinique um, mascara, so that's the one I use, um, and it's just high impact mascara, yeah. which um, I find that most mascaras will spread and they go onto the bottom of your eyelid. And I've got quite some eyes, so when they fall, it just gives me more of a panda look. Whereas the Clinique ones, the brushes are really good, and I just find for me it doesn't spread, so that's why I t I tend to go with the Clinique high impact. I have a sneaking suspicion that might be a tubing mascara. So when it comes off, you use your micellar water. Does it come off in sort of long, large bits? Yeah. Yeah, it's a tubing mascara. That's why it suits you and it doesn't come down to your face. Oh. It's also really excellent for people who either have sensitive eyes or have contact lens wearers. They can wear tubing mascara. But more importantly, it just doesn't shift. It forms a little tube on your lash. And then when you put the micellar on, the whole tube comes off in one. Yeah, very clever. The Clinique foundation was uh, Clinique even better. It's their clinical foundation for pigmentation issues and it's excellent. So for my lips, I'm a very much a gloss girl. I don't really Me too. Me too. I wear gloss. And so if you go to Wilkinson, they do collections uh, and essence, which is their very, very cheap brand. But the makeup that collection do is brilliant. So I use their eyeliner. Yeah. And Broke. And this, I think, cost me two pounds um, and it lasts for 14 hours. So collection, fast stroke eyeliner. Fast stroke. OK, so and is that a black liquid eyeliner? Yeah, black liquid eyeliner. I'm so, impressed by your skills, Nagat. So I, yeah, so I do my own eyeliner and I've taught myself how to do that over the years. Um, and yeah, that's my eyeliner that I use at the top of the eyes. I've not learned how to do a winged and all that fancy one. I'm trying to learn how to do that. But for my lips, definitely I use e Extreme Shine. Okay. Uh, and I love pinks. Pinks is my color to go to. So um, this is what I use a lot. And I love volume lip gloss. I will tend to sometimes put on a lipstick first and then top it up with a gloss because I like the glossy look. But um, all of them are from either Essence or Collection because their colors are so good. And this cost me £1.20. Um, any blusher or anything, is that it? So what I do, Nadine, is I buy loads and I will have one in my coat pocket, one in my handbag, one in my car. <laughs> so I just have lots and lots like rolling around of these, but I love them. I, lo I love that. And I just think your, your makeup is always really beautiful. I just think you do a really good job. Funnily enough, when I announced that I was going to do a live with you, <clears throat> everybody knows you from television. 
the amount of people that were saying how beautiful you are was really interesting to me. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it, the gap. You're doing it brilliantly. It's really bizarre because growing up, I hated my nose and I'm still not a fan of my nose. I hated my cheeks because they're so high and I hated my lips because they're big. Thank goodness for Kim Kardashian because big lips are really... <laughs> thank, I mean, thank heavens that we outgrow the insecurities of our childhood and that beauty trends come and go. And that as we get older, the best thing about getting older is settling into yourself and realizing that you're not so bad after all. I think that's really true because um, all the hangups and insecurities I had um, have changed because I also I have to say the beauty industry have really changed as well. There's so much more diversity. I never saw people who look like me in magazines and now John Lewis have a whole range of clothing for hijab women and the models that they use and they're using South Asian women a lot more so I think that um I think that's the other thing as well which stops you from feeling so insecure and you're just like actually I'm all right so now I'm just like I would never do anything to change my face because I'm very happy it's what I was born with and I'll die with it and no it's amazing and it's the amount of people that say to me I hated my nose growing up I hated my lips growing up I hated my eyebrows growing up all those things and then suddenly to see that actually fashions like eyebrow fashions come and go and then you think if you've changed your eyebrows and they never grow back it's such a pity and I think it's just about getting to a point where you accept who you are and what's the saying you can only be what you can see and just having all those options out there and realizing you can celebrate different skin tones and different hair textures and different noses and different eyebrows I do think the beauty industry has come a long way and it needed to it needed to so I'm also then, because I have high cheeks. I, I lo Can I just say, people would pay to have those cheekbones. <laughs> I hated my big round face when I was growing up. I had a big moon face and I wanted a slim, elegant I face. face. But they age really well. Yeah, they A doctor once said to me, you really do have a lot of cheek filler, Nadine. And I said, I don't have any filler. I have no filler in my cheeks. Solid bone, that is. I love, one of the things I do use is, so I use, um, so I think I got this from either B&M or Pound World. It's been a little while, so B&M. But this is Laura Geller. Um, oh, I, you sure you didn't get that from TK Maxx? Oh, TK Maxx, sorry, is one of those. That's, that's an American designer brand. Yeah, it's a designer brand, but yes, yeah, sorry, TK Maxx. It was one, yes, I remember. I found this, but the baked gelato swirl illuminator is what I use on my cheeks. And um, so the peach glow is what I use. And it is just perfect. It just gives you this lift. And this is well worth getting from TK Maxx. I mean, I'll be really honest with you. The thing about TK Maxx is once they've gone, they've gone. But <clears throat> if it's that good, somebody might even pay full price for them. I love Laura Geller. Laura Geller is an American professional makeup artist. And quite often her stuff is discounted in TK Maxx. And it's such good value for money. But with, with the, um, Laura Geller, it wasn't really the brand that I bought it for. No, it's the colour. It, it was the Illuminator. So, I, I mean, I... I, like I said, I'm not brand loyal. So when this runs out, I will probably go to somebody else. And then as long as it's like that illuminator, because, but. I, I tell you who else does them. Uh, Mac do them and they're baked and they're sort of shimmer, soft shimmer. And if you've really got a lot of money to throw away, which obviously you haven't, um, uh, Hourglass do amazing ones as well. Oh. But essentially they're all, they all come from the same factory in Italy. And they're this sort of, very hard baked bronzer stroke peach shimmer and then they have a soft shimmer in them they're beautiful really lovely oh no that's really so that's a really good tip for me for when i run out and then the other one is wonder beauty and i want to say tk max for this as well um see i buy stuff and they last me for such a long time but the reason i brought this was because it's got um a really lovely blush and bronzer so okay. i will do that so i put my foundation on i put my um eyeliner on um, and then it's my my cheeks I spend a lot of time on my cheeks so I tend to put my blusher on first and then maybe um, my bronzer just to give it a bit of almost uh, contouring or the contouring <laughs> um, okay. I try and do a little bit and then I will use an illuminator on top and that's literally my beauty regime and that's what I have and then I, I, I absolutely <laughs> love it any favorite fragrances Oh, I'm a Hugo Boss girl. Um, I didn't realise you were going to ask me about fragrances. So for, when it comes to fragrances, again, I will do that little bit of investment. So um, I get a Hugo, a Hugo Boss. Uh, La Femme is my, is my go-to. 
and I have I have bottles of it around the house because I just think it's lovely and so flowery and things. And who doesn't like you know Coco Mademoiselle? I mean Chanel. That is my luxury, luxury. Though. So I will use that if I'm going to a really expensive do or I've got a dinner date with my husband. <laughs> Honestly, I think they were absolutely brilliant. I've written them all down and we've managed to romp through everything that's available on the high street from Aldi, Lidl, Tesco, Poundland, uh, what else have we got here? TK Maxx and a little bit of Boots and Superdrug for L'Oreal. I think we've done really well. Yeah, I know, honestly. I, and I want to, like, I'm not loyal to any brand. So it will literally change and chop whenever I feel that actually this is quite good. And the price is really the indicator, but then the ingredients as well. So it has to match exactly what they, um, you know, the ingredients that I would do. So if I'm going to change it for a price point, I will make sure that it's definitely worth changing it for a cheaper brand if the ingredients are the same. So that's why things like, you know, body shower, shower and conditioner, it's exactly the same ingredients that I would pay for something more expensive, I feel so. I agree completely. And for the person that asked me just now, of course I'm going to save this. <laughs> and also, can I just say, Dr. Nagat has offered to come on <clears throat> and do some more chat. So if you've got any ideas about what you'd like her to chat about, this happened to be our bonding moment over Budget Beauty. Yeah. But if you'd like her to come on and answer any of your questions for female health or menopausal health or anything like that, let me know because she's a mine of information. She's absolutely brilliant, but she speaks in a way that makes it understandable for people without any medical knowledge at all. So you were wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I was, I was getting really embarrassed because I thought they're literally going to be like, everything's below five pounds at the best what I buy. So, but this has been such a dream, honestly. It's been so lovely to share what I use because um, it's only when you use it and then you lots of people say, well, I do the same or this works better. And that, that is perfect for me. So it, you've given me so many tips to take away with and I'll pick your brains as well later on. No, yeah, absolutely. Always slide into my DMs. And for the person that just asked for uh, menopausal hair uh, problems, I will definitely pitch it to uh, Vicky, who's the producer who works with me at this morning, because I do think a two handed one would work really well. Like I said, they asked me to come on and I just said, I'd love to do it, but I do feel like I need a medic. So now I know that I've got a medic that's beauty obsessed. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah, I know. And also, I'm always very much about low cost of cost. Someone just said there's a cost of living crisis. And yep. honestly, it's so, um, it's so important at this cost of living crisis, not to buy into the fact that everything has to be expensive. It really doesn't. You can still have amazing skin. Um, and and to just make but do those things really importantly every now and then that just makes you feel like a queen. And that's the most important thing. So don't worry about splashing out. Sometimes you need to do that little bit because if it makes you feel good, honestly, that's worth, that's worth so much. And I know that I can say that. And sometimes you can say it because you're from a place of privilege, but um, it's, it's really important that you know that even in a pound land, it, there's no shame or stigma attached to it. Cause I go there as a doctor and you can still feel absolutely fabulous on budget buys. Once that product is open and on your face or on your skin, nobody can tell how much you paid for it. Yeah. Honestly, I am such a fan of High Street Beauty. I think it's never been better than it's been now. And as a beauty insider, I can tell you that so many products are sourced from the same factories and the same manufacturers. They're just maybe in slightly different packaging. So please, yes, believe every word she says. She knows her stuff. Thank you so much. I'll save this. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Nagat. Bye.